So hi everyone, this is Nina Collins and I'm here today with Tracy Nicole, who is a clothing designer from Atlanta and a writer and a blogger. And um, I'm really excited to see you today. We've met once on the phone. Um, so welcome Tracy. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so beautiful. Um, so Tracy's normally in Georgia, but she's in LA today. She's out there on business and picking up her two daughters. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to invite you on to talk today because I thought, I think you have a really interesting business story that I think um, our members will appreciate and want to learn about. And also I want them to just learn about your clothes, your clothes and the idea behind your clothing line. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about how you got started? Because you did not set out initially to be a fashion designer intentionally, even though you loved clothes and sewing. Yeah, I, it was one of those things that kept calling me. You know how you, you, you get into something and it just flows. And even if you try to leave it, it pulls you back. So that was, that was fashion for me. Um, started in college as the go-to girl for fashion. And what I thought was just a, a hobby or something I like to do, um, I ended up learning. I was actually very talented. Mm -hmm. um, I started off self-taught. So I taught myself how to sew and I would go get fabrics and I can look at you and cut out an outfit and it fit me perfectly. Really? Do your mother or grandmother sew? How did you learn how to sew to begin? Where'd you grow up? Um, I grew up in Atlanta and it was my grandmother that exposed me to fashion. So she was more into style, not necessarily sewing. I mean, she had a sewing machine and I started playing on her sewing machine, but no one ever taught me. Wow, you did it yourself. Yeah, but so I- hard. I'm impressed. I took a sewing class when I was 12 or 13 that my mother actually paid for and was kind of a disaster. Like, it's not easy. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that you taught it yourself. <laughs> I didn't know it wasn't easy. So that probably gave me an advantage. <laughs> but seeing my seeing my grandmother um, in her just style, like she created her own style. She made her own rules. Um, every outfit had jewelry to match and shoes to match. And she even wore uh, different color wigs. Uh, oh, really? Like, like radically different colors? Oh platinum, purple, blonde, oh, like, my like my grandmother was. <laughs> awesome, is this your mom's mom or your dad's mom? My mom's mom. Wow, cool. Yeah. And then her okay. nail polish matched each outfit. Like she, it was the details. <laughs> Did she work? What was her, uh, now I just can talk, talk about her. That's so interesting. What year was she born? Um, ooh, I can't remember what year she was born, but she was a nurse. Okay, cool. She was a nurse. Um, with a fashionable nurse. <laughs> a very fashionable nurse. Awesome. So she inspired you. She did. She really inspired me. She gave me that, that style bug. And, and um, I learned at an early, early age to, to make your own rules when it comes to fashion. So mm -hmm. great lesson she passed to me. Yeah. So you loved to sew and then you went off to college. And what did you study in school? I studied occupational therapy because in my home, Becoming a fashion designer was not a career and I needed to quit talking about it. <laughs> Is that what your mom told you? Absolutely. So mm -hmm. it was not supported. Um, and of course she did it out of love. Yeah, so, of course. She wanted you to be taken care of and be absolutely. smart. Absolutely. She was like, you know, you you got to do something um, to make some money because yeah. you have sense of taste. And <laughs> yeah. Was she also a nurse or what did she do? My mom, she actually worked for the Environmental Protection Agency. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. I worked for EPA for ooh, 39 years. Wow. And watching my mom go to a nine to five, let me know very early. I did not want that life. Interesting. Why? Yeah. Um, I just saw her get up every day to go to a building she didn't really care to go to. Huh? Um, never excited about it. And it was a job that she had to do. Yeah. In order to take care of us. And right. she did it every day. And it didn't bring her joy, didn't bring her happiness. And um, I intentionally knew I did not want that life. I did not want a nine to five. Well, so I had to learn how do you not have a nine to five? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, which is not, of course, natural for a lot of people. I mean, I also don't have a nine to five and have rarely had one, but it's it takes a certain kind of personality and certainly a lot of courage, I think, to be entrepreneurial. So how how did you go from occupational therapy? Did you ever work as an occupational therapist? What happened? I did. Um, I specialized in head injuries. Um, it was one of those careers that no day was ever the same. And um, I stuck to my... I never wanted to work for anyone um, and became, came straight out of school, an independent contractor. And wow. so, okay. so you were really serious about that part. I was, I was, I, I was reading books and cause no one really taught me. I just, I observed my surroundings and I was exposed, you know, exposing people to different lifestyles really has an impact um, when you're young. So the people that I saw really enjoying life to the fullest, they were working the least. Yeah. So, you no, know, I, was, I have to say, I, I give that advice to young women all the time that if you can be entrepreneurial, be on mm-hmm. work for yourself, because particularly for women, when you have kids and it's really hard, like the, the life you're describing of your mom, you know, it's tough mm-hmm. managing kids and, and providing for people. It is. And yeah. the schedule was rigorous and she wasn't able to be present like I really wanted her to be. Yeah. And um, that was another thing, you know, she couldn't, she couldn't be there for certain things. And I, and I, I'm the complete opposite with my daughters intentionally because I want to be there. Mm-hmm. Nice. And so, you know, just trying to set my life up where I can be there. You know, I started reading books like The Courage to Be Rich and Susie Orman and listening to things that, um, that just poured different ideas into me on how this can be done. That's amazing. That's really, that in itself is super inspirational, I have to say, because you look at young kids and I mean, what you just said about looking around at examples is not something I really remember doing when I was that age. And I wish I had done it more and like really, because it is a big world and there are a lot of things you can do and a lot of ways you can live, but we often just kind of go the route we know or So it's great that you just said, hey, I'm going to really think about this. Oh, I was like, no, this is, (laughs) I don't want to work for anyone and I'm going to figure this out. And I'm not going to say, you know, everything was smooth because you're constantly learning. Even now you're constantly learning. But um, I took a traveling job. I traveled places no one wanted to go. Doing occupational therapy. Occupational therapy. And um, Where'd you go? Uh different places in New Jersey, uh, Philadelphia, uh, rural places in Georgia. <laughs> so I got up to Jersey following a man. Um, <laughs> All the time. I get it. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that was how life started. And um, it ended up coming back home when my mom got sick and uh, taking care of my mom. But I started back working in occupational therapy when I got back into Georgia, but I started going to fashion school at night. At at what age? Um, I was 25. Wow, okay, so you graduated from college, you had a career, you were working for yourself. Yes. You're like, I really wanna do fashion, so I'm gonna go to school. Yeah, and I was, let me tell you, I was director of rehab at 25, overseeing three facilities, my employees were older than me and I had a lot um, of responsibility and it felt like a job then. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was, yeah. And, um, but I knew fashion was for me because I could, I could work a 10 hour day and go to school at night and feel like, yes, okay, it's time for school, you know. <laughs> this is where I belong. This is where I can. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And did you have a vision for what kind of back then at 20? How old are you now? I'm 45. 45. Okay, perfect. I'm 50. So did you have a vision always of what kind of, like, did you think you were really going to create a clothing line? Like how ambitious were you at 25? How did that evolve? I will be honest with you. I think it was more dreamy at 25. It was more dreamy. Um, You know, you're taught, you have to learn how to do something, even though it was already in me. Mm -hmm. So um, what was missing was the confidence. Mm -hmm. and um, coming out of school, I still didn't have the confidence. So I I had the dream, but not the confidence. So it took me, it took me about five years to to get there. 
It's not long, Tracy, from 25 to 30. And I love that line. It was <laughs> really easy. Like, that's a really great way of thinking about it. Like all the things we're afraid of. Yeah. You know, if we listen to ourselves, what's what's already there? Like, what do we know we should be doing or want to be doing or want to have in our lives that, you know, it's, so it's amazing when you wake up and you realize the only thing that changed was the way you thought about it. Yeah. And yeah. the only thing you, that changed was the way you felt about it. So um, I like to teach young girls that the only person that needs to believe it is you. And that's, I mean, that really is the hardest part. Yeah. And it sounds like a cliche, but it's really completely true. It really is true. I yeah. lived it. Yeah, you sound like it. Your story is really kind of amazing. So wait, sorry to back up for a sec, but did your mom die? And I'm sorry. No, no. And and um, that's a good question because you have no idea. My, my mom woke up paralyzed. Oh my she God. Woke up paralyzed. Um, she, I want to say she got up at 3 a.m. to go to the bathroom and she woke up at 8 a.m. and she couldn't move from her waist how down. Old, how old was she? Jesus. Ooh. That's a good question, uh, and I should know. Let's see, she was right, I, I would say late 40s, maybe 50, something like that, around there. How scary, what was it? Yeah, um, she was diagnosed with Gillian Barre. Hmm. And um, the only reason I was familiar with it was because I was an occupational therapist. And I learned to treat that in school. And my mother, you know, at the time I was, um, traveling the country and I get this call and um, it was devastating. I, I literally hit pause on my life mm -hmm. and I quit my job and I moved back home and it, I didn't give it a second thought. I was the only one of my sisters that hadn't gotten married, hadn't had any kids. And I was just, you know, living this life. And so I could, I could come home and my mom was like, Oh, my daughter's a therapist. She's coming to fix everything. <laughs> and and it was like, and that's what she would tell all the doctors and my daughter's coming, it'll be fine. Awesome. And um, a lot of pressure on me, but- pressure, but it's very sweet. But yeah, so um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Shepherd Spinal no. Center in, in Atlanta. It's a really popular um, place for people who are paraplegic or quadriplegic. And um, I went there for, aqua therapy training as a therapist to to actually do therapy sessions for my mom so i i literally just hit pause on my life and became her therapist god what an incredible story and then what happened so i stayed for a year and when i say i hit pause i literally lost myself in my mom's life um you know yeah boyfriend at the time or a partner I did I did and that relationship suffered um I couldn't I couldn't focus on anything but her mm -hmm. which tells you what type of mother she was mm -hmm. and um yeah. you know my mother was it still is just amazing and um she gave everything to her kids so it was the least I could do you know That's yeah. And um, would definitely do it again. But, you know, my mom was married, my still married to my dad, my dad that raised me, not my biological father. But, you know, they have this love story that I love. Um, her waking up paralyzed, you know, she told him, she says, I, you know, you didn't sign up for this. So if you leave, it's not, it won't be a big deal. Oh, God. You, you have permission to leave. And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm not going anywhere. And it just turns out that my dad um, had a sister uh, with polio growing up. Hmm. She was wheelchair bound. So taking care of someone in a wheelchair wasn't foreign to him. And my mom always says, God knows who to send into your life. And, um, you know, I saw him take care of her like you would want a man to take care of you. You know, yeah, real love. you don't know, you don't know someone's real love for you until something happens. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. I, hate to, I hate to quote Jada Pinkett Smith, but when you're in the thick of it, <laughs> that's when you know. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's so bad hey. quoting Jada Pinkett Smith. <laughs> hey, I got newfound respect for both of them. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but it, it, it was one of those defining moments for, for them both in their relationship. And in talking to my dad, He's like, I fell in love with your mom all over again. 
and um and they really do love each other like it's like go get a room like they really are so cute together and um having that example of love is is inspiring and did she recover or is she still in a wheelchair what happened to her still in a wheelchair um she can walk with a walker they told her she would never walk again and i told her you know doctors do not they're human right they can make that determination and so i'm happy that my mom believed me because she kept pushing and you know, going through therapy. So she can walk with a walker, yeah. um, but she is wheelchair bound. She usually gets around like on a scooter, but they're so cute when they travel together. And, you know, it sounds like it's a really, it's a really lovely story of like healing and mother daughter and everything. So then you went to fashion school and then you started this business. What have been, tell us a little bit about your business. So what kind of, clo- I mean, I know the answer, but tell the listeners, the watchers, like what kind of clothing, I mean, the clothing is, it's very kind of beautiful, soft fabrics and very kind of flowy and sexy. Yeah, I am. I'm really a feely type of person. So I feel every fabric that I work with. And I, it has to feel good before I even learn what the content is. And um, I know what feels good. So when you pair up something that feels good and design it to look good, to me, that's the perfect combination for any woman. Yeah. And it's easy. It's easy. So um, being comfortable and sexy at the same time, it's the dream. <laughs> and how many years have you had this business now? I launched my first collection eight years ago. Okay. So not that, I mean, a good amount of time, but not that long. Not I'm- that long. And it, and it goes back to having the confidence. Um, when I started my first business, it was a boutique. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I will tell you, for me, it was easier to become a buyer for my boutique than it was for me to jump out there on faith and you know, put my designs out there. I was scared. Yeah. So I hid behind my boutique for five I'm years. I'm going to open a store and make things and just sell these things in my store. And that's like, a, is that, is that what you did? Is that how it works? Actually, I supported other designers. So I was buying. Oh. I would go to New York and go to Coterie and Intermezzo. I had really nice, I had this eye that I still have. And, um, I mean, I was shopping for a living. That's what I did. <laughs> I did that too. That's funny. I was a scout. I used to, I shop books for a living in the twenties. So okay. I, yeah, it's interesting. It was like, I would pick up things for people to yeah. translate abroad. So you, you opened a store by yourself or with a partner? I opened by myself. Mm-hmm. Um, it was called Tracy Nicole. Okay. And um, I learned a lot going through it. Mm-hmm. And um, that's not the best way to learn. The best way to learn is to have a mentor or someone to help guide you or, you know, have this, this, this plan that's thought through. I did not. Yeah. Yeah. Because you make a lot of mistakes inevitably. Yes. A lot of expensive mistakes and you learn things the hard way. Um, I opened the store by myself. Um, I wanted to create this boutique in Atlanta where you didn't know which city you were in. So I I had um, slabs of concrete for the countertops and I called it industrial chic Uh so you could be in LA New York or Miami and in in this boutique and that was fabulous place yes um but I was in Atlanta okay Mm -hmm. and Atlanta at the time was a baby in fashion Mm, okay uh so much so if 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 a show came to Atlanta like designers, if they brought their um, clothing for shows, they wouldn't even bring their nicest pieces. Wow, really? They really thought of it as like a backwater. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I went to, I did all my shopping in New York Mm -hmm. um, at Coterie and Intermezzo and it was was great because, um, you know, it it was so many things that that you didn't see other places. Mm -hmm. But the downfall of that was, Atlanta's not fashion forward. So I'm loving on these things. <laughs> it's not right. I was about to say, did you make lots of cool friends? Like when I went to Chicago, I went to Ikram, you know, that store that Michelle Obama loves. Yeah. And like, it was so fabulous. But I'm, so I'm imagining like a, you know, a version of that in Atlanta. Did you like love all the people who shopped with you? Was that fun? Or was it really just too hard to find good customers? Cause it's just not. Um, no, it wasn't hard. In fact, I will say, Having the store back then laid the groundwork for launching a line years later. So I still have people say, I used to go in your store. I used to shop in your store. I still have pieces. Um, 
I chose items that really coincided with my idea of my brand. So I've always been known for certain types of clothing, which I'm not going to sit up here and take credit saying this was intentional building of my brand, but it it, it inevitably just built. The, like, what, like what kind of clothing? Say that again. Like what kind of clothing are you naturally drawn to? Naturally drawn to timeless, mm-hmm. um, chic, like you can pull it out of your closet in 10 years and people will still say, where'd you get that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you'll still feel good in it and you'll still look good in it. Um, I try to design uh, from one season to the next. So I may take the pants from one season and design a top that would match it. So you don't have to purchase an entire outfit to get up in a new outfit. So I take that into consideration and it's, it's just fun. Yeah. And what's your price point? Like what, what's the range for your clothing? Um, average a hundred, 150. Like, right. Yeah. You can get an outfit for 200 or less. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's totally size inclusive or whatever the correct term is these days, right? Kind of body positive all over the map. Yes. So my sizes are from extra small up to a triple extra large now. I don't carry everything in triple X, but I I do go up to double X and everything. That's really Um, Yeah. So I've been able to expand the last couple of years to just be inclusive of all body types. Yeah. I was curious. That seems like a real trend right now in fashion, right? Well, I mean, it's called with the the average size is a 14. So yeah, Yeah. it's, you know, it's important. It's essential. I I would, I like to call it bringing normalcy because- it is bringing normalcy. No, I completely agree with you. It's like, we've, we've had backlash sometimes on the Wolfer when we've done um, partnerships with a couple, um, like these leather pants from this woman, Daryl Kay, who I adore, but they're leather. And so, you know, I've learned a little bit, it's expensive to make it, it but the price changes if you make really large okay. sizes. Okay. And so she only goes up to a size 12 and that's infuriating for a lot. Of, right. Exactly. So Ouch. <laughs> learned a lot about that and started to focus a little bit more on brands that are really size inclusive. Um, so what are the biggest challenges for you running a line? I, oh, another question I had is I've, I've started to understand that with fashion, right? There's a whole obviously trend like the question now with COVID is like is retail dead so like I've as I talk to some fashion designers I'm learning that people are really steer starting to steer away from department stores and really only doing online sales and I'm curious how that works for you it works amazing really it's much better not be in the department stores so I will tell you this I started online I launched my first line online and um I was just jumping out that there I go the risk taker because I wasn't even an online shopper. In yeah, fact, I don't buy a lot of clothes online, but when, more. when people told me about even buying groceries online, I just thought it was ridiculous. And now I love it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but at the time it wasn't, it wasn't a popular thing. Yeah. And I remember saying, I hope more people start shopping online. And that was eight years ago. Mm-hmm. So you were really ahead of the curve. I definitely, definitely. So you know, it kind of reminded me when I start when I opened my store and I had all these fashion forward things, I was always ahead. And so um, eventually it, it works out in your favor. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And so how does word of mouth happen? Are you always looking for publicity? Is it about being in magazines? Like how do you grow your customer base? And is that a challenge for you? Or like really what are the biggest challenges? Um, I will say I'm very prideful about never paying anyone to wear my clothing. Um, I don't have a big marketing budget. My clothing speaks for itself. And and literally when you put it on, you're going to want more. So if that's not happening, then I'm not doing something right. The word of mouth is amazing. Um, I have um, something on my site that, that, that leaves reviews and you get points. You know, everyone loves points. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. You get you get some so you buy stuff, and you go in and you comment. You get some points toward your next purchase or whatever. Yeah. So it's a win-win. I actually get true feedback from people I've never met who who give me good feedback, mm-hmm. and um and I live for it. Like I I want to know I want to know how you feel. I want to know 
you know, what the clothing has done for you. Cause it's an experience to me and, and I'm offering an experience when you put the clothes on. If, you, if you're not saying, Oh my God, you know, yeah, if you're not feeling it, then, then you're, then you're bummed. Then you are, you Tracy are bummed. Well, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, I'm going to go on and buy some of your clothing. I'm super psyched to have this experience. You have, and I've spoken once before and I've certainly looked at your website. So I have a sense of the stuff, but I don't have any yet. So I'm going to get some, cause I'm really excited. I really find you super inspirational and just, just Thank great. You. Um, a couple of questions. One is, I always wonder with designers, like, do you only wear your own stuff? Like, how does that work? I get that question all the time. <laughs> honestly, because my clothing is so comfortable, I'm wearing it all the time. Like, I'm wearing it now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Stand up. Are you wearing a top and pants? What are you wearing? I'm wearing, um, so this is actually something that was just made. It's a reversible dress. Cool. Oh. Nice <laughs> How long is it? Oh, that is great. Nice. I could totally wear that. Oh, that's very cute. Look at you. And what's on the inside? What's the reverse? Is it just black? Reverse is, it's a dark gray, it's charcoal. Okay, that's fabulous. I want to buy that dress. Is it easy to find on your website? Um... This one in particular, I will say during COVID, I dropped some really cool pieces and this was one of them okay. and we would sell out in two days. Ah, okay. So um, we right. may have one or two left, but so, but I'm going to make something happen for you. Okay. So we're right, talking. I'm gonna say no, because I definitely want to buy something. You do not have to send me anything. I want to buy something. Um, you just have to email me and let me know how, but that is fabulous. But this particular style, you know, I can, I can make it happen for you. Thank you. Okay, it's crazy comfortable. And I love the off the shoulder thing. Mm -hmm. um, although of course, now that no one's wearing bras, are you wearing a bra? For the interview, I am. Oh, nice. <laughs> hey. Actually, wait, I am too. Come to think For of the it. interview, I am. But on a regular day, Most absolutely time. not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The girls are free. And <laughs> another thing is I can throw on some sneakers and run out or, you know. Or you can fancy it up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Super, and which is exactly what I mean. The only clothes I even before COVID, I pretty much wear things that I can kind of wear day and tonight. I mean, sometimes the versatility is what I, you know, being a mom with multiple businesses and a really active lifestyle. I'm thinking about the woman that's juggling. Yeah, yeah. And whether you have kids or, or not, like a lot of women wear a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. And one thing you want to be easy is your clothing, you know? Yeah. And I'm noticing a lot of your clothing is very, it's like a lot of, looks like a lot of like soft cotton. So it's kind of clingy. What's your position on shapewear? Like, do you Ooh, think women should wear good. it? Don't I get these good questions. So <laughs> I'm curious. I, I'm always worried about my stomach. I mean, you know, it just is, it's there. It's fine. I joke, I joke a lot, um, but not when I say I'm anti-spank. Um, I do think that um, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, it's really uncomfortable. I wrote, I'm anti Spanx too. In my book, actually, I wrote in my book, there's a fashion chapter. And I said, I actually put on Spanx before my second wedding and took it off before I left to go down the aisle. It's just fucking uncomfortable. <laughs> and how many weddings have there been? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You. Okay. <laughs> Only two, really. My, I was I was married when I was very young to a green card. I mean, he was my boyfriend, but it was a green card marriage. So I've had two real husbands, and I like to say only one real husband. I had a, the hus I have a husband who's the father of my four kids, who I divorced in my thirties, and then I had okay. a second marriage to a jerk. So. Okay. <laughs> I love that. That's what makes you you. That's what makes me me exactly. <laughs> but how many times have you been married? Um, I only married once. Okay. Engaged okay. twice, yeah. but married once. No, no, no. Divorced. Okay. Divorced, yes. So my ex-husband is, is out here oh, now. Right. That's right. He's in LA. And do you have a partner now? Um, Ish. Personal, personal. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I have a I'll, nice... Let's just say I'm smiling. Good. That's all that matters. That's good. All right. So you're anti Spanx. So what kind of underwear do you wear with these clingy dresses? I'm sorry. I'm getting really specific now. No, I don't mind at all. Um, I'm a thong girl, a thong girl. Ever, ever. but I am a comfortable thong girl. 
I don't think there is such a thing, but I know there are a lot of like people, people like you out there. I hate thongs. I am a, I'm not going to pull up my skirt because that would just be, but I'm a big panty girl. So <laughs> I am. I <My> big panties. <laughs> Maybe if I buy your dresses, I'll have to get some thong. I mean, I can wear a thong if I have to, but I just, I always feel like in the thong, like my stomach's hanging over them. I don't know. I just don't get thongs. I get the right. You, you might need a high rise thong. Maybe a high rise thong. Yeah. That's, and I'm telling you, there are some comfortable ones out there. Okay. This might be maybe for my 50s. I'm turning 51 next week. Maybe I'll start experimenting with thongs. It's not amazing. a bad thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So no bra and a thong. That's, that's mm -hmm. good. The way. No song, that's the way okay that's the code i'm gonna put that in my head to think so, about so back to your undergarment question yeah. so most of my silhouettes they are they're loose in the right areas i mean okay. i've had two kids i know the areas a lot of people they're like oh i wish i could wear your clothes i'm not as small as you and things like that but um i gained 60 pounds with my first child and and i know the problematic areas that women you know want to hide yeah. and that's across the board mm -hmm. you know you might eat a little too much you you might you know yeah. across the board you just want where you can just ruch a little bit mm -hmm. and hide and so you know you can accomplish that in most of my garments okay wow what is your current favorite piece of clothing on like that you've designed or your or your client's favorite piece of clothing is there something that just everyone loves that you adore what i have on what you have on yeah i mean it's, it's really a dress with pockets and one it's my favorite because it was the most challenging to design oh what's that it needed to look the same on each side mm. as far as no, not the exact same but stylish on each side with pockets so so creating a design where the pockets are reversible where you can you know flip it push the pockets in it was challenging and then um putting the seams in the right places where it hits the curves in the right places mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i still have that little like i'm gonna stand up again because i need yeah, to show this is really cute oh i just lost tracy i'm sure she'll be back on in a sec I was looking at my blouse and like, this is not timeless, I don't think, right? This is probably just like super trendy, but whatever. Sydney, are you out there? Hi, I'm still listening and I have Tracy totally off. I think her computer may have just bumped when she got up and unplugged. Yeah, probably. Well, we'll give it a sec. She's so great, I love her. We could just have a girl crush talk. Yeah, no, she's just really, really cute. There you are. I have no idea what I did. <laughs> we were just, Sydney came back on and we were just talking about how incredibly cute you are. And I was deciding <laughs> this house is not timeless. This is kind of trendy. It's Ula Johnson. I mean, it's- Oh, no, I think I'm not, not trendy. It's not timeless. But anyway, that's okay. That's a classic piece. No, I disagree. <laughs> I guess eyelid is classic-ish. Eyelid is classic. Okay, so you see, I get like super excited when I talk about my clothes. So, <laughs> so you see, you see, you got this little room here. Wait, turn around. Let me see your butt. Super cute. Oh, and the seam in the back is really cute. In the back, it gives you that nice curve because if you don't have the seam, then you got you got baggy back there. Yeah. So I wanted like getting this. See that little. Yeah. yeah that was the. It's kind of sassy and super yeah. comfy. And the off the shoulder thing is awesome. So you're wearing a strapless bra, I guess, obviously. I I only have strapless bras. I hate straps. Huh. Yeah, I hate straps. Good. So I like you so much, but you and I do not understand each other when it comes to underwear because- No, no, because if I came to your home, I would literally steal all of your big girl panties and throw them out the window. <laughs> mystify me. I don't feel like there's ever been a strapless bra that I can wear. I mean, I try. I, you have to for oh, some reason. So we're just going to have to do a whole we're segment. Have to have an underwear underwear date one day when we can meet in person. Yes. We're, we're going to go underwear shopping. Okay. Is it, is it a date? Sure. Yeah, I'd love it. We okay. need to film that because that's going to be funny. <laughs> that's 
so funny. You don't like straps. Love this. No, but I know how to, I know how to pick really good strapless bras. Uh, clearly, if that's all you wear. Huh. Yeah, but think about, think about the heavier chested woman that wears a strapless bra. Like I, they make some good ones. I can't even imagine, honestly, because that's the problem. And my, my breasts aren't that big. I'm like a BC, but it just always feels like you're sagging down. But yours you look- the wrong, uh-uh, you got the wrong. Yeah, I'm wearing the wrong bra. Yeah, okay. you up nicely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You look fabulous. <laughs> All right. Well, the okay. things that we did, the, I don't want to keep you forever, but I did also want to mention that you wrote a memoir, right? Called Who Said Peaches Were Perfect? So it's a work of fiction. Oh, it's a work of fiction. <laughs> okay. It's a work of fiction. And um, I wrote it to give some life, life lessons to young girls. Wow. Um, lo very loosely based on some things that I've experienced, but definitely not a memoir. Okay. Is it available? Is there a place people can find it? Um, it is. Um, it's it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Okay, and it's called "Who Said Peaches Who Said Were Perfect." Peaches were I'm bummed that I haven't read it yet, but I love the name. Um, I'm and gonna have I, to, like send you a copy. It's it's really a great. Well, and I should send you a copy of my book. So actually, I'll we'll get That's each other's dresses yeah. and swap. I should also send you my mom's book. So. Um, we'll do that. We'll do that for sure. All right. Well, I just think you're great. I can't wait to meet you in person. We're going to, I'm going to order your clothes. We're going to talk about your clothes in the Wolfer because it seems really, I mean, it seems like great clothing for middle-aged women and for all women, but certainly for women who want to be comfortable and feel confident and relaxed at the same time, which is certainly what I want. <laughs> so you are juggling, juggling, juggling. I'm taking a picture of us. Yeah. Oh, cute. Oh, wait. I don't know. <laughs> All right, I don't even know where my phone is. All right, well, whatever, Sydney will get one. Um, yeah, take one of me too, with you, very cute. I like your nail polish too, okay? I, I totally have a girl crush. Um, all right, well, we will see, hopefully we'll meet in the fall sometime. I don't know, whenever this is over. It'll happen. It'll happen, yeah, enjoy I LA. This, again. this was fun. Yeah, be safe. Me. Uh, we'll keep talking, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>